Hey, what is going on guys? It is Colin from CSP Tech here, and this is an essential phone, and this is Android 10. Or Q, but it's 10 now. So it's the day after Android 10 has officially dropped, came out for the Pixels and Essential Phones yesterday on the 3rd, and I got the chance to play with it for the day, and I realized it's almost no different from Beta 6, which I've been using for the past little while. As you guys know, I've been on Beta Q Beta since May when it officially released. Uh, Essential has been really adamant about giving the betas as soon as they come out for the Pixels, which is awesome. So I want to give you guys my thoughts on what I think of Android 10, what I think are the best features, and we'll do that in a list of my top five favorite features of Android 10. Let's do this. All right, so the first thing that I love about Android 10 is actually the gesture navigation, which a lot of you are gonna be like, wait, what? I don't like gesture nav, I want my buttons back. And that's totally fine. It took me about a week to really get used to it, but honestly, I can't go back now. My fiance has a, a Samsung phone that only has the, the three buttons on it, and I can't, I don't remember how to use them. It's really crazy. I've been using this for almost four months now and I've completely forgotten how to use the buttons as fast as I used to be able to. And that's the biggest thing for me in the biggest thing that Google's pushing is gesture navs are just more natural, they're more intuitive, but they are actually quicker. And I'm actually really agreeing with them on this one. So the way that the gesture nav works in Android 10 is it's still your three buttons. They're just kind of laid out a little bit differently. So your home is actually always just a swipe up now from the bottom. So instead of just pushing home button, you basically from any time at any point in any app, you just swipe up and you go straight back to the home screen. It's really nice. It's really fluid uh, and it stutters less than it used to in the betas. So the next thing is how to go back on the phone. And obviously that's a pretty essential part of, no pun intended, of Android is the back button. And they've actually made it really seamless here. So instead of having a button that you have to reach down to the bottom of the display to click, you actually just swipe in from either side side and it's really natural feeling because my phone my thumb I'm scrolling through the phone you know it's nice and my phone is always my thumb is always resting on the side here so I basically just swipe in at any moment when I gotta go back it's really nice it's really intuitive I actually try to do that on most of my friends phones now whenever they give me it they're like oh check this out I try to like go back and they're like what are you doing um, it is kind of annoying when you're trying to scroll through uh, like photos or something that scrolls horizontally, sometimes you can accidentally trigger it, um, but it's usually a pretty intentional flick from the side of the phone, which I think uh, is pretty easy to avoid once you get used to it. But I really like this back feature because it's, it's so much more adaptable than any other gesture system, just because it's not always at the bottom, you can basically do it anywhere along the side of the phone. It's really nice. And last one is multitasking or window switching. I guess, I don't know what you call that officially, but basically now instead of swiping up to go home, you kind of swipe up halfway, like a, a small, a small just tight little pull up and you hold there for a half second and it brings you up to the navigation pane. It's kind of a weird one, but you get used to it pretty quick. It's more of a tap and hold and like a nudge up then a full swipe. And the last part of that is obviously switching between windows, which is basically just a swipe along the bottom on whatever direction you want to get to the next app. You just swipe, 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 uh, and you can kind of do it that way as well. So the gesture navigation is really smooth now. During the betas, it was pretty stuttery and it was pretty bad uh, at the beginning, but they fixed it and it feels a lot smoother. So I do really like the gesture navigation. Give yourself about a week to get used to it. And trust me, just don't go back. Give yourself a week, but you will never want to go back after that week. It's so good. All right, guys, so I've scooched over a little bit because number two I want to talk to you guys about is notification priorities. And this is something that is, I didn't think I was going to care about, but I actually really like it. So. Boop, there's my home screen. You guys can see it come up now, so you guys will be able to follow along while you're doing this. So obviously, as you guys know, if you swipe down from the top of Android, you get your notification. You get your quick settings up top. You can pull down again to adjust them, but uh, you get your main notifications here. And I'll talk about Smart Reply as number three. You guys can kind of get a little hint of that up here. But basically, you guys will notice that I have a section at the top here, which is my main notifications, and then I have something called silent notifications. And I really like this. So basically, how this works is a you have differentiations uh, in notifications now. So what that means is a text message, for example, should be probably high priority and you can put that in your priority. It'll vibrate your phone, it'll make a sound and it will notify you that you have a text message. But for something like a reminder of something or uh, maybe like 
for example, a YouTube video prompt. Oh, you stopped playing this YouTube video. I don't need it to buzz me when that comes in. And now you actually have the ability to completely customize this. So how this is gonna work is, for example, a clock. That's a pretty important reminder. But if for some reason I decided that, you know what, I don't want my clock to notify me that I have an upcoming notification or an upcoming clock. So for example, it's 8.30 right now. I have my clock set for 8.45. I can basically, instead of dismissing it, which you can obviously interact with these notifications, I can push and hold on it. And it's actually gonna give me uh, options here. So I can change it to an alerting message or a silent notification or turn off notifications completely. And basically what that does, if I click silent and I hit apply, it moves it down to the bottom section, which is silent notifications. So now it will pop up on my screen, it will notify me, but it will not buzz or vibrate. It'll just kind of appear on my phone in the background. But clocks are pretty important, so I'm gonna change that back to alerting. And if ever at any moment you change your mind, you can change it back. It's really awesome, so silent notifications will come in and you just never really notice them until you kind of look at your notification bar. You can see that you have them, but it won't ever buzz you or ding you. So for example, oh, there we go. I got a maps updating as I did that. Um, that comes in as an important notification that disappears. Um, and that's kind of a sneak peek into a later one because we'll talk about location and privacy settings. But for example, YouTube, if I wanted it to be uh, an alerting notification, I just change it up. And now this says, hey, you didn't finish your video. Why don't you play it back on the Chromecast? But uh, I'm going to turn that back to silent. So I really like the ability to kind of just flip this in and out. And it's actually kind of a cool thing. You get to kind of customize your notifications if you want something to bother you or not, which is cool. And since we're here, and I already kind of mentioned it, we're gonna jump straight into number three, which is Smart Reply. If you guys haven't used Smart Reply before, it's so fantastic. Google's implementing Smart stuff, uh, obviously, but Smart Compose, Smart Reply, all these things are really great. So for example, I message myself from this phone over here, and basically, uh, if you guys look, there is a notification from me. So if it says, hey Colin, where are you? The nice thing about this is I can literally, if I pop this down, I get my notification, it gives me prompts to reply. So obviously within Android, I can hit reply and just start typing, or I could be like, I'm at home. And it just sends a message to say I'm at home. The amazing thing about this is, one second. Now I finally sent myself a message where it basically says, let's say somebody says, okay, come meet us at the CN Tower, meet us at 200 Front Street. I don't remember if it's exactly 200, but I think that's Union Station here in Toronto. Uh, and basically in my notification panes, I will get okay, uh, to the message that said, come meet us at the CN Tower, and also a map. So if I click on open map, it basically knows it's gonna pop me right into 200 Front Street, and there we go, Simcoe Place. We're pretty close, we're pretty, we're much around the corner. So that's really cool because it allows you to just, you know, make things happen faster, and it just makes interacting with your phone a little bit better. So um, that's Smart Reply, you can kind of just hit OK, and it'll give you prompts. Oh, I'm messaging myself, so it popped up again. Um, but it's really easy, it's really smart, really intuitive. If somebody's like, uh, hey, can you remind me this at this time? It'll pop up for that. If you're like, hey, uh, where are you? You can share your location, things like that. It's just really easy, and I really like it, and I hope it gets better and better. In Canada, if ever they do money payments, hey Google, you should uh, allow GPay to send money payments. Oh, my just triggered my phone. Hopefully I didn't trigger yours. Uh, you could be like, hey, don't forget to send me that $15. And maybe you could be like, hey, send $15. Like, I think that'd be really amazing. And I love Smart Reply because sometimes when you're not able to you know, reply to a text really quick, you just look up and it's usually pretty good. Also, it kind of learns how you talk. So it replies things that I would reply with like one or two, three word answers to people. So that's kind of nice. I like it. So number four for me is a bit of a two-parter. So on the list of things for Android, they talk about privacy controls and location controls. I'm actually gonna touch in on this really quick together, but I'm mostly gonna focus on the location controls because sometimes there doesn't need to be an app that knows where you are at all times. Now, I've sold my soul to the Google gods. I, uh, I do Google Maps timelines. I am like a local guide in my city. They know everything about me. I already know that and I've already sold my soul. I've signed the contract. It's done deal. But the one thing that's weird is sometimes there'll be an app that's like, hey, this QR code reader is using your location. Do you want it to be doing that? And you're like, no, not really. So the nice thing about Android 10 and my number four thing on this list is location controls and privacy controls. We'll touch on that a little bit. But basically, now the one thing that I really like about Google is now that everybody's a little concerned with privacy lately for some reason, um, Basically, they give you the option to opt out of all these features and just say, hey, do you want this to be, you know, do you want this to track your location when you're setting it up? It prompts you all these locations individually. And the one thing that I really like is it says, do you want to allow location access? And it says allow all the time, 
allow only while I'm using the app or don't allow. And if you say allow all the time, it kind of normally would just end there and then it would always be tracking you and you'd never know. But the nice thing about Google 10 is it, uh, Android 10, is it reminds you. So I've had so many times where I'll get an app that basically will be like, hey, QR code reader is using your location. Do you want it to be doing that? And I'm like, no, don't allow because QR code should never use my location. But if it's something like Facebook, I'm like, you know what? I want it to know it allowed to use my location only when I'm in the app. So things like that have been amazing. Privacy controls, there's a bunch of stuff you can customize. I think it's really great. And it's a really step, a good step in the right direction because it allows you to keep an eye on what you're sharing. Um, and for me, for example, I share my location with my fiance all the time. So we always know where each other is, uh, are. And it's really convenient because sometimes it'll be like, hey, just a heads up, you're still sharing your location with somebody. That cool? And you're like, yeah, it's totally cool. And they're like, all right, cool, thanks, man. And that way you don't forget and it's really cool. So if ever your friends text you and they're like, hey, where are you? You share your location, it'll remind you that you're still sharing it with them if it's beyond the standard hour. So I just really like that. And that's number four is location and privacy settings. And the last thing here that I know that so many people are excited for is this is number five, my top five favorite things. I guess it's not really my favorite things because I don't use it, but people are very excited about it. It's here. It's dark mode on Android. People love this. I don't really care. And you want to know why? Because I have an essential phone and it has an LCD display and it's not OLED. So it doesn't actually matter for me, to be honest, but a lot of people really like it. A lot of people are so excited that it's now officially supported in Android 10. The only thing about it is that individual apps you have to go in and turn on as well. So like messages, you'll have to turn dark mode on for that. Um, you know, a bunch of other apps you have to physically turn on dark mode. Uh, and that can be kind of blinding sometimes. So maybe maybe in the future, if you hit dark mode, it just changes all your apps to it. Um, Cause there have been times on battery saver mode, it goes into dark mode. Um, again, LCD display, doesn't matter, but you'll be, you know, texting in dark mode or whatever, uh, or just navigating in dark mode and then you open up text messages and it like blinds you with a white light. So it's not quite there yet, but it's, it's getting there. I know a lot of people are excited about it. So it's in officially. So that is my top five favorite features of Android 10. I have two quick honorable mentions, uh, both similar, but different. The first one being live caption. A lot of you guys might be like, hey, why didn't you include live caption? I have an essential phone and I can't seem to find it anywhere. Normally what would happen is if you're playing a video that doesn't have subtitles, you just hit the volume button uh, and they're underneath the volume slider is a little live caption button. You just hit that and it starts captioning your video. Really cool. I don't know if it's out yet or if it's just a pixel exclusive thing, but it is not on the essential phone as of today, which is September 4th. Um, if it does come out, I think it's gonna be really great. It's gonna be really good for a lot of people, um, but it is not here yet. The second thing honorable mention is going to be the Google Assistant locally on the device. I cannot wait for that. I don't know if it's now or not. I actually haven't tested Google Assistant that much since it came out. I will definitely have to do a little bit more testing with that, um, but apparently it's supposed to make it faster and just respond faster to you and that sort of thing. So that'll be really cool. But that's basically it. Guys, that is Android 10 in a quick nutshell. Probably not quick, it's probably been like a 10 minute video at this point, but I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on it and basically let you know that Essential is still killing it even though they're not gonna make a second phone, but that's about it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know what you think and hopefully I have a couple more videos coming very soon. Uh, keep an eye out for, oh, I don't have them here. Um, another earbud video coming, but this one's slightly different. They're very small and hopefully a smartwatch video coming soon. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, let me know what you guys think and if you guys are already on Android 10. If you're not, let me know what phone you're using and what your anticipated arrival for uh, Android 10 is or if you're gonna get it at all. Leave me in the comments down below and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.